The Merovingian bloodline and its offshoots include a long line of pharaohs in ancient Egypt, including Ramses II, who was considered to be one of the greatest pharaohs of all time. He was his country's master architect and utilized sacred geometry in all of his structures. His name could be found on almost every ancient shrine. The gold mines of Nubia made him rich beyond imagination. This bloodline also includes the extraterrestrial human hybrids who ruled Sumer, Babylon, Greece, and Troy, and which today rule the world. This key bloodline comes down through the most famous Egyptian queen, Cleopatra, who married the most famous Roman emperor, Julius Caesar, and bore him a son, Ptolemy. She also bore twins with Mark Anthony, who has his own connections to this line and its many offshoots. This bloodline also connects to Herod the Great, the Herod of the Jesus stories, and continues to the Roman Piso family who wrote the gospel stories and invented the mythical figure called Jesus. This same bloodline includes Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor who in 325 AD turned Christianity based on his ancestors' stories into the religion we know today. King Ferdinand of Spain and Queen Isabella of Castile, the sponsors of Christopher Columbus who instigated the horrific Spanish Inquisition, 1478 to 1834, in which people were tortured and burned at the stake for in any way questioning the basis of the religion their various ancestors had crafted. In fact, if you go deeply enough into this genealogical research, you will find that all presidents are from this line. Genealogical sources like the New England Historical Society and Burke's Peerage have shown that 33 of the 42 presidents, up to Clinton, are related to the Charlemagnes, and 19 are related to England's Edward III, both of whom are from this bloodline. A spokesman for Burke's Peerage, the Bible of Royal and Aristocratic Genealogy based in London, has said that every president election since and including George Washington in 1789 has been won by the candidate with the most royal genes. Now we can see how and why. United States presidents are not chosen by ballot, they are chosen by blood. Those of you in synchromistic circles will have undoubtedly noticed how much the blimp or zeppelin aesthetic has made its way through the cosmic airways. This, in my opinion, is the universal simple system's way of indicating a period of ascension. As I pointed out in my blog, the three days of transcendental darkness may be upon us, and we will need to summon the courage to leap from the lion's mouth to come out transformed on the other side. With Led Zeppelin making their reunion comeback and movies like Stardust coming out that feature Robert De Niro flying a lightning-catching Zeppelin craft, we need only read between the lines to see the coming dawn. John Connery has played many roles in his life where he was of noble blood. King Arthur in First Night as an example. Indiana Jones and Connery resonate the serpent and the lion, or Leo, wisdom and nobility. Notice Leo being one letter shy of Keanu Reeves' nickname in The Matrix, Neo. When you take into consideration Neo and the lion were both Christ archetypes, movies like Narnia and The Lion King become exposed for what they truly are. In Narnia, the lion being sacrificed on the rock or the temple mount and in the Lion King being reborn on the very same metaphorical sacred stone. It's also interesting to note that River Phoenix, who plays the young Indiana Jones, died from a drug overdose at his Viper Room nightclub. Some even theorized foul play was involved. 
we will see the Phoenix of Rebirth again in Freemason Puff Daddy's Reptile Tower and Zeppelin infused Come With Me video for the Godzilla soundtrack. Watch very carefully as the planes explode in New York City in blatant 9-11 format. The image of the Phoenix of Rebirth appears as the plane explosion blasts Puff Daddy into the elevator. We then see the entire building being blown into the sky with the towers in the background as the doves of peace fly gracefully through the air. Anyone familiar with the Denver airport's portrait of the fascist officer skewering a dove with his scimitar will understand the Illuminati's idea of peace. Just read the Georgia Guidestones. It appears not far from the great millennial age. Fire approaches the great new city. The bird of prey arrives and offers itself to the heavens. At 45 degrees, the sky will burn. Instantly, a huge scattered flame leaps up. A great slaughter. Terror. King to be outside. He will stay far away. Through his enemies, they will arrive to subdue it. Afterward, the new city contemplates a condemnation. Before and after. War to reign by good fortune when the buried come out of their graves. James Earl Jones also resonates the lion and the serpent. As the servant ruler of the Temple of Set in Conan the Barbarian, the voice of Mustafa in The Lion King, and the lion-skin-wrapped African king in Coming to America. When we see Arnold the Sun God decapitate the serpent in front of an all-seeing Masonic eye compass, it is metaphorically depicting the sun decapitating the dark rift of the Milky Way galaxy. In the movie Entrapment, John Connery, our lion's gate opener, attempts a daring heist atop the gigantic compass of the Malaysian Patronus Towers. Patronus being the source of concentrated love Harry Potter uses to cast out Voldemort. As phallic fireworks explode all around the octagonal Masonic Towers, and the sun-symboled helicopter bears down on Lionheart Connery as he makes his escape, the millennial clock ticks down to midnight, and the wonderful sings take my mind on a familiar journey through the spirals of time. Let us sleep from the lion's mouth, so that we may be reborn anew. <laughs> 